so fucking hot. Um, okay, so. Wait, I have to say what this is, right? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Welcome back to another edition of East Side Stories, a behind the scenes look at the creation of East Siders the Series with me, Kit Williamson, the creator of East Siders the Series. We're on to episode three. If you like this series, make sure that you like and subscribe so you can keep watching it and uh, click that link in the comments below to donate to our season four Kickstarter campaign. We can't do it without your help. So moving on, season one, episode three. It's been a little bit of time. Things have settled down between Cal and Tom and Tom is gonna go work his brunch shift. Cal takes this opportunity to check Tom's phone and actually make plans to meet Jeremy, AKA Jezebel. And speaking of phones, once again, Cal's phone case changes from blue to white to blue again. Cal's phone or Tom's phone? Who can even say at this point? Thankfully, nobody seems bothered by it, except for me. We get a very fancy jib move, our only such fancy jib move in the entire first season when uh, we go from Jeremy sleeping in the loft bed down to the door where Cal has been knocking incessantly. Call back to the way that Kathy knocks on his door incessantly. My favorite moment in this confrontation scene is when Jezebel gets all up in arms and thinks that Tom has been cheating on him and Cal corrects him like, no, sorry, he's cheating on me. You're the Jezebel. He's cheating on me? No, he's he's cheating on me, actually. Four years, sorry. So what do they do? They get drunk together, because that's what everybody does to solve their problems in East Sider season one. They just drink and drink and drink. And obviously, I'm condoning that. There's nothing bad happens, certainly not in this episode. Nobody makes choices that they eventually regret. Anyway, Ian is regretting his decision to offer Kathy a ring from a hipster girl that he bought at a bar because she thought that he was proposing to her. And he's rehearsing how to break the news to her in the mirror when, bam, she shows up over his shoulder. Just as he thinks that his life is about to be over and she's about to literally rip his head off and shove that ring down his neck, she reveals that she's actually relieved that he wasn't proposing to her because it is pretty crazy to get engaged to somebody six months into your relationship, particularly if you are Kathy. And Ian. Okay, so I did get proposed to with a real ring. It was not bought from a hipster girl at a bar. John proposed to me when we moved back to New York. He had gotten there a few months before to move the cat and start his new job and get the apartment set up. And I had to stay behind in Los Angeles to shoot a movie. And I got there, it was snowing outside. He greeted me at the door with a glass of champagne. He walked me upstairs and he lit candles all over the apartment, super romantic, with a light up sign that said, will you marry me? But I was carrying my suitcase and backing into the apartment, talking to him for a hilariously long amount of time, refused to turn around to look at what was going on in the kitchen behind me until he finally like literally had to take me and turn me around to show me that he was proposing to me. <laughs> so, Cal and Jeremy are pretty drunk, and uh, they make some pretty bad choices. Jeremy gives a speech where he talks about how he knows deep down he's not actually a good person, he's just aspiring to be, and he thinks about it all the time. He thinks, what choice would a good person make in this instance? And in this instance, he chooses to go with his gut, which is to not be a good person, and he and Cal hook up. I think that this is a really surprising, fun moment in the show, because it's something that could only happen in a gay web series or a uh, gay adjacent web series and a bisexual web series. So Cal and Jeremy have sex and uh, Jeremy gets kind of mean and who can blame him? Because at this point, Cal has insulted him like 10 times in a row and asserted very strongly that he hates his guts after they had sex. I hate you. Which is a really romantic thing to say post-coitally. Post-coitally? When you're hoist. Hoist. Oh. Ugh, it sounds like post and moist. So Cal cries. Cal loves to cry. He's never had sex with anybody other than Tom. So it's kind of a big story moment for him. That's not necessarily the norm in a long-term gay relationship where people have been together four years and, you know, have a cat. We've been together for four years. We have a cat. In gay terms, that's like 2.8 kids. But that's their story. And that kind of raises the stakes for everything that's going on with Cal. He's not acting rationally. He's acting out of character. So Cal comes home and Tom is counting out his brunch money. It's a long ass brunch shift because it's night out now apparently. They decide to leave Christmas up, which is a metaphor for not really addressing what's going on in their relationship. And the fact that Cal is now cheating on Tom and the tables have turned, but nobody knows it. 
play a uh, song for the end of the episode, which is a cover of Silent Night from Little Brutes, which is a, an amazing queer band who we use a lot in the show, we use them in season two as well. I love a sad, haunting Christmas song, and Silent Night is probably my favorite in that category. So because this episode is a little bit shorter, we have a very special guest to talk about his experience on Eastsiders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main stage, John Holbeck! Hey! Oh, hey, babe. So you're straight on the show. Yeah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so, so fucking straight. <laughs> what was it like playing straight? So fucking hard. So easy. I don't know. Anyway, what was the experience shooting the first episodes like for you? What did you think was going to happen with it? Gosh, I sure didn't know what was going to happen with it. We didn't even know if we were going to finish the first season. We were just going to make a couple of episodes and put it out there in the world and see what it was. At the time, I'd never acted on camera before, so it was figuring that out. It was also like figuring out how to put up lights and how to make sure everyone has enough potato chips and Diet Coke. <laughs> there was a lot to figure out, a lot of trial and error, but it was also really fun and exciting and everyone was really excited to be there and make it a thing. It was a real Judy Garland, let's put on a show attitude. So this was your first time acting on camera. Prior to that, we were both Broadway babies. That's true, I've done a lot of theater, most of which where I did not talk like myself and <laughs> would uh, make crazy faces or make bold physical choices. So this is uh, one of the first times where I really just attempted to talk like a person. And how many times? Did I succeed? <laughs> did, I, did I succeed? <laughs> oh, you want to know if I succeeded? <laughs> Acting. How many times have you been in Tartuffe? Three times. Including on Broadway with Bryce Dallas Howard. And TR9, Grey's Anatomy, George O'Malley. Boom. So what was the first crowdfunding campaign like? Oh uh, God, it was really, really fun. We didn't know what to expect and we were so, so lucky and we actually made our goal of $15,000, which really seemed like a lot of money at the time in four days. days. We were like, oh my God. We were so, so lucky to have the support of Vans fans in particular. A lot of soap opera fans came over and tried to make sure that this thing could be a thing. I remember I wrote it over Christmas break. Yeah, we were in a huge time crunch because right after that, Logo came on board wanted the first season and wanted it in like two months. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd never done this before and all of a sudden we had to do it. Overnight. Go, go, go. Eye of the tiger. Run, run, Rudolph. I had to call in like literally every favor that we had ever earned from holding the boom for our friends or acting in somebody's graduate school thesis for free. So that's it for another episode of East Side Stories. And please like, subscribe, and leave any questions you may have for us in the comments below. And don't forget to click that little link to the Kickstarter page to make a donation or share the campaign with your friends. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Christ the Savior is born.